In this video, we're going to talk about the least squares regression line and residuals. So once a scatter diagram and linear correlation coefficient show that two variables have a linear relation, we then need to find a linear equation that describes the relation. So let's use the data below to answer the questions. Now, let's write a linear equation using two specific ordered pairs, like you might do in a developmental math course. Remember, the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. So we need to be able to calculate the slope first. So that's the change in y over the change in x, which, remember, is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So as ordered pairs, I can write this as x1, y1, and x2, y2. Use the formula. That's 1 and 9 tenths minus 5 and 7 tenths divided by 6 minus 2. That gets us this over this, which equals negative 95 hundredths. Once I have the slope, I can pick an ordered pair. I'm going to use the first ordered pair, 2 and 5 and 7 tenths. So plug in, y is 5 and 7 tenths, slope is negative 95 hundredths, the x in this case is 2 plus b. Solve for b. I can add 1 and 9 tenths, that gives me 7 and 6 tenths equal to b. So my equation would be this. Okay, part b, I plotted the points, and I put in the line that we just determined here. Okay. Does the line perfectly fit all the data? Well, of course not. We only use two of the ordered pairs to come up with the particular line. Okay, let's take a look at part C. So now I want to use the equation to predict y when x is equal to 3. So here's the equation we came up with in part A. Plug in 3 for x, multiply, then add. So notice with the equation, we got the y value being 4 and 75 hundredths, but the actual observation is 5 and 2 tenths. So there's a little bit of an error between the observed y value and the predicted y value. This is what is called the residual. Now, you might ask, is there a line that better fits the data than the one we came up with? Yes. The more the data values that we use, the more accurate the line will be. Is there an actual line of best fit? The answer to that is yes. We'll have that discussion in a minute. But first, residual. This is the error between the observed and the predicted values for y. So let's compute the residual based on the observed value of x equal to 3. It's the observed value above or below the average. Remember, the actual ordered pair or observed was 3, 5, and 2 tenths. And when we plugged in 3 into the equation, that was 4 and 75 hundredths. So our residual is the observed, 5 and 2 tenths, minus the predicted, 4 and 75 hundredths. Subtract, and we get... 45 hundredths. So clearly the observed value is above the average. Okay? And we know it's going to be above the average because take a look at the residual. The residual is positive. If the residual was negative, then it would be below the average. Okay, so let's compute the residual on the observed value of x equal to 5. Remember, the ordered pair was 5, 2, and 8 tenths. So now I need to be able to predict the y value for x equal to 5. So again, go back to the equation we came up with. Now plug in 5 for x. This gives us 2 and 85 hundredths. So remember, the residual is equal to what? The observed y minus the predicted y. 
So the observed, that was 2 and 8 tenths, minus 2 and 85 hundredths. That's going to give me negative 5 one hundredths. And this is going to be below the average since the residual is negative. So what is the best line that fits all the particular data? This is where the least squares regression line comes into play. This is the line that minimizes the sum of the residuals. It's using all the ordered pairs, and it's minimizing the error. Right? So when you take a look at the particular equation, it looks a lot like this. y hat is equal to mx plus b. But they change what the slope is. The slope is B1, and the y-intercept is B0. So again, they show you how you can get the slope and the y-intercept without technology. But notice, in this particular case, we will be using the graphing calculator to come up with the least squares regression line. We will never be doing this by hand. Okay? And we'll round the slope and the y-intercept to three decimal places. Okay, let's take a look at an example. So using the drilling example and the graphing calculator, we're going to come up with the least squares regression line. Okay, so again, keep in mind, we know that the drilling begins, that's the explanatory, that'll be L1, and the time to drill, that's the response variable, that'll be L2. So let me put these data values into the calculator now. Okay, so I put in the values so for L1, again, that's the depth at which drilling begins. And L2 was the time to drill 5 feet. So how do we find this equation with the calculator? Hit STAT, highlight CALC, go down to number 4, which is LIN reg AX plus B. Hit ENTER. X list is L1, Y list is L2. Highlight CALCULATE and hit ENTER. So notice here, the A is the slope, because it's Y equal to AX plus B, and B is the Y intercept. So we'll round each of these to three decimal places. So A will be 0 0.012, and B will be 5.527. So let's put this equation on the paper now. OK, so notice it's y hat. Don't put y, to put y hat equal to 0 0.012x plus 5.527. Okay, part B, predict the drilling time if the drilling starts at 130 feet. So x is equal to 130, so plug that in. Okay. So multiplying and adding, that'll give me this. Don't forget to put your unit of measurement, which in this case is going to be minutes. Okay, let's take a look at part C. So determine the residual using the observation where drilling began at 130 feet. Is this above or below the average? Okay, so we know the residual is equal to what? Observed y minus predicted y. Well, the observed for 130 feet, that's going to be what? 6 and 93 hundredths. Predict it, we just did, that's 7.087. Subtract, we get this. Again, don't forget your unit of measurement, which in this case is minutes. So this is going to be below the average since the residual is negative. Okay, and interpret the slope and the y-intercept. Well, the slope is this as a fraction. So remember, this is the time, and this is the depth. So when they ask you to interpret, we're going to write a sentence in the context of the problem on exactly what the slope means. So if the depth at which drilling begins increases by one foot, 
then the time to drill five feet increases by 0.012 minutes. So again, I'm talking about the two different things in this problem depth at which drilling begins, and the time to drill five feet using the appropriate units of measurement, in this case, feet and minutes. Okay, the y-intercept. So the y-intercept we know is this. If you recall, as an ordered pair, that would be x is zero and whatever the y value is going to be. Well, remember, the x is depth and the y is time. So in another words, when we drill the very first five feet, it'll take about 5.527 minutes. So let me write that out now. So the time to drill the first five feet is about 5.527 minutes. Again, I'm talking about time to drill in feet and the how long it takes in minutes.